If I asked you to list some perks that used to be utterly broken and completely unfair, the first few that would come to mind would probably be Old Decisive Strike, Old Borrowed Time, Old Metal of Man. But if we narrowed it down to broken killer perks, what are we left with? Maybe Old Noed? Well, I've heard arguments both for and against Noed, but there was one killer perk that was utterly, undeniably overpowered, and that was the original version of Undying. While the original version of Undying had an incredibly short run compared to most other overpowered perks in DBD's history, it absolutely came in with a bang. The story of this perk's Reign of Terror starts from the second it released on the 8th of September 2020. Oh my god, that's three and a half years ago already. With the release of The Blight. To set the scene here, Billy had just been ruined with his ridiculous overheat nerf, leading to speculation that they gutted Billy to sell more Blight DLCs since they were both high mobility killers and Hex Ruin was still the meta perk for killers. It had already been reworked away from its original skill check mechanic and instead granted 200% faster automatic gen regression without deactivating itself after a survivor died. The biggest issue with Ruin, as always, was that survivors could cleanse the totem and completely remove Ruin from play for the remainder of the match, which could prove catastrophic for the killer when playing in sweatier, high MMR games, which I'm sure you can relate to. But just because your matches are sweaty doesn't mean your crown jewels have to be sweaty too, and Manscaped have sponsored today's video to help you out with the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, the all-in-one kit for keeping your nads looking and feeling fresh as can be. You've got the Crop Preserver deodorant to keep the sweatiness in game and leave you smelling fresh, alongside the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra, the Magnum Opus for keeping your Magnum in pristine condition, with dual skin safe blade heads, upgraded trimmer blade and interchangeable foil blades to maintain maximum performance, which is followed up by the Crop Soother to keep you feeling smooth and soothed after you shave. To round off the package, we have the Weed Whacker 2.0, the waterproof nose hair trimmer also with skin safe technology to keep nose hairs at bay too. The value doesn't stop there either, the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra comes with two free gifts, the Boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 to keep your new gadgets organised. Head over to manscapes.com slash Arditha and pick up your Performance Package 5.0 Ultra today or use code Arditha at checkout for 20% off, free international shipping and two free gifts. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Video. Whether you thought that cleansing the hex was a fair way to keep Ruin balanced, or the RNG nature of totems made it too unreliable, Undying was there to solve that issue. Well, Undying still gives hexes another chance to this very day, so what's so special about the old one? Well, what if I told you that it gave any hex perk not just another chance, but two more chances? Yeah, that's pushing it a bit you might think. Well, it's DBD we're talking about here, it wasn't just that. No, instead, Undying had no limit, meaning it would keep shuffling your hex perks to fresh totems over and over and over again until there were no more totems left to move to. Yes, you're understanding that correctly. This did mean that killers could have five ruins, five haunted grounds, five devour hopes, five huntresses lullabies, five third seal or any different mix of them. It was absolutely crazy. There was one slight weakness compared to the modern version, which is that stacks didn't transfer over on stacking perks. So let's say you have three stacks of Devour Hope, then they break it and it gets transferred to a new totem. Devour Hope would then be back down to zero stacks and you'd have to build it up again. Did that weakness effectively balance on dying and keep it fair? No, not even close. Even when you lost your stacks, the ability for a broken hex to reposition to a better, more hidden location was incredibly valuable as it is, let alone if you're using it with non-stacking hexes like Ruin. Since it could also work with multiple different hex perks, imagine having to hunt down a Devour Hope four different times, all while Ruin is regressing gens at 200% speed the entire time. That that's the sort of war of attrition Undying could force. Thankfully, Skull Merchant didn't exist back then, but imagine release Skull Merchant with release Undying paired with Ruin. The game would have been genuinely unplayable. Surprising absolutely nobody, from the moment Undying released, it instantly became hard meta. 
While yes, it did make every hex perk effectively five times more powerful, and we did see a huge rise in different hex perks as a whole, especially Devour Hope, those were all nothing in comparison to Ruin, which absolutely stole the show for obvious reasons. It doesn't take a genius to figure out why either. If you take the best killer perk in the game and add another perk that effectively makes it five times better, you're going to see that best perk dominate even further. And dominate it most certainly did. Against low mobility killers like Bubba or Trapper, your best bet was probably just to try to ignore the ruin, hunker down and complete the gen before the killer patrolled near it, which, depending on the killer's playstyle, could prove to be quite easy or very difficult. If the killer committed to chases then you'd most likely be fine, especially if you had multiple people working on the gen together. If they played hit and run then they'd likely be paying multiple stops to your gen before you had the chance to finish it. Sure, by abandoning chases they wouldn't be getting many downs, but Ruin would absolutely be getting value. And for high mobility killers? That's a different ballpark entirely. The reworked Ruin was already significantly better on high mobility killers than low mobility ones. The reason being, Ruin couldn't do anything unless the killer scared the survivors off the gen. More mobility means travelling the map faster, patrolling every gen faster, and chasing survivors off gens more often. Which is a real shame because low mobility killers needed the help the most, but what can you do? Even if the high mobility killer committed to chases and didn't play a hit and run playstyle, once again, high mobility killers are generally just better characters, and as a result, they usually win chases faster too. This means that they could often commit to a chase, get a down, hook them, and still reach your gen to force some ruin value regardless. This pretty much meant survivors had one option. Find the hex totem, which already took a varying amount of time, then break the totem, which took another another 14 seconds on top of that. Then, find the next one, break that, rinse and repeat five entire times before Ruin was finally dealt with. The time it takes to locate a totem varies a lot. It depends on how well you know the spawns, your starting location, and which totem is actually the currently lit undying totem. Keep in mind that undying didn't instantly light all five totems. Only two would be lit at a time, and they would only be relocated after the current one is broken. Of course, breaking a dull totem meant that it's one less spawn for Undying to relocate to, which still helps. But if it's a stacking perk like Devour Hope, that doesn't help you reset the stacks until you find the correct one. Let's assume you know every single totem spawn and you run to each one in as close to a straight line as you can, stopping to break each one as you pass them. That's 14 seconds per totem you cleanse, and let's just give it a very short time of 20 seconds to run to each totem. Times both of these by 5, and that's just short of 3 entire minutes dealing with undying. And I think 20 seconds to find each totem is pretty wishful thinking for the majority of people, so it would often end up being even more time than that. And yet, and yet, it could still be pushed even further. The killer can see lit totem ores at all times, which means they would also know which ones to protect and shoo survivors away from, adding even more time-wasting potential, which could still be pushed further with Thrill of the Hunt, which at that point in time slowed down survivors' hex cleansing speed by 6% for each totem on the map. That's right, that means the very first totem survivors broke would take 30% longer, the second one 24% longer, etc. And every time a survivor began cleansing a lit totem, the killer would get a loud noise indicator telling them exactly when and where the lit totem was being cleansed at, meaning that defending it was even easier than ever. But the bad design doesn't stop there either. All of that crazy value was possible just by equipping Undying, yet it it was also possible to equip Undying and get next to none of that power. You see, while Undying would keep moving other hexes every time they were broken, Undying itself had its own totem which could also be cleansed, and if they happened to cleanse the Undying totem first, then it would be disabled before it had the chance to do anything. In fact, Undying could have been broken at any point. It could be the first one, the second, the third, you get the point. So the perk that was designed 
to help solve the issues that come with the RNG nature of hex totems also ended up being the most extreme example of RNG hexes we could get. The fact that it could take anywhere between 1 to 5 totems and it's entirely down to luck was absolutely ridiculous. There was one more difference between old undying and current undying just to serve as the cherry on top. While the current day version shows the aura of any survivors near a dull hex totem, the old version also maintained their aura for a further 6 seconds after they left the totem's range and worked on lit hexes. So if a killer wanted to defend their totems, there was just about zero way for survivors to cleanse them without them knowing, with or without thrill of the hunt. And surprising absolutely nobody, things needed to change. Just like the ratio of subbed versus not subbed people watching this video. Over 80% of the people watching this aren't subscribed, so if you're enjoying it, help me out with a sub. And finally, five months after Undying's release, on the 9th of February 2021, patch 4.5.0 released, bringing Undying some much needed nerfs and a surprisingly appropriate buff. Buff. Undying now preserves stacks when transferring totems. Nerf. Undying now only transfers totems one time. Nerf. Survivors' auras now disappear the moment they're out of the totem's range. Nerf. Now only reveals survivors' auras near dull totems. Buff. Doubled the aura range from within 2 meters of a totem to 4. Which ended up being some really great changes. For starters, Undying working indefinitely until there were no more totems was just ridiculous. I have no idea how that made it into the game to begin with. One bonus life is is still good, it at least prevents your ruin from getting insta-cleansed at the start of the game. The decision to make it preserve tokens on stacking perks like Devour Hope or Huntress's Lullaby was a nice boost to encourage playing with some of these less popular non-meta perks. Giving a nice little bonus to the underdog is something I think DBD should do more often. Too many times over the years we've seen the best perks work even better on the best killers than they do the weaker ones. For a very relevant example, the reworked Ruin. It was the best slowdown perk in the game at that point in time, but it did far more for the already top tier, high mobility killers than it did for the weaker, low mobility killers who really needed the help the most. If those nerfs were so good, how come we rarely ever see Undying anymore? Surely the nerfs killed the perk then? Well, to put it simply, Ruin was killed when they halved its regression speed and made it automatically cleanse itself after a survivor was killed. It's important to remember that Undying is a supplementary perk for other hexes, and if people aren't running hex perks, then there's nothing for Undying to protect. Even though the stack preservation change was great for perks like Devour Hope, gen slowdown is far too important, and as a result, people would rather dedicate these slots to slowdown perks, like at the time of writing this video, Grim Embrace and Dead Man Switch. 